In today's video, we're going to be looking at using completing the square, but this time we're using it to solve equations. If you're a little bit confused about completing the square, don't forget to check out my previous video where we actually explained how you go about completing the square. And Leslie Martin's mum is back with her amazing maths knowledge to help us with this topic. So today we're going to solve by completing the square several equations and each time we're going to leave the answer as a square root if needed. This is just one method of solving these equations and it's certainly not the method of choice. If you can, you factorise. If you can't, use the formula. So you'd really choose to use completing the square only if you are told to. But it looks very similar to any other quadratic equation you've seen in the past. So x squared plus 6x minus 1 equals 0. Completing the square it's going to be x plus something squared. The number, if you remember, is half the coefficient of x. So it's x plus 3 all squared. Over on one side, multiply the bracket out, which you've just written. So it's x squared plus 6x plus 9. Get rid of the 9 that you don't want. Put in the minus 1 that you do want and keep the equation going. So it's x plus 3 all squared, minus 9 minus 1 is minus 10. So it's x plus 3 all squared, minus 10 equals 0. Now, this time, unusually for quadratic equations, you're going to take the 10 over to the other side. So add 10 to both sides, x plus 3 all squared is equal to 10. And it's at this stage you square root. If I square root the left-hand side, you just get the x plus 3. If you square root the right-hand side, you get the square root of 10, or when you square root a number, you can also have a negative answer. So it could be minus the square root of 10. Don't be surprised by this. Equations with x squared usually have two roots, and this time, one's a positive number, one's a negative number. Okay, it's x that we want to find, so I need to take the plus 3 over to the other side. So I'm going to take 3 away from both sides. So x is equal to minus 3 plus root 10 or minus 3 minus root 10. Two completely separate answers, and as it said, I've left the square root of 10 in the answer. Let's try a second example, very similar thing. Solve by completing the square the equation x squared minus 4x minus 8 equals 0. Put it into a bracket squared. First term is x. Second term is half of minus 4, which is minus 2. There's my squared. Over on one side, work out what you get when you square x minus 2. So it's x squared minus 4x and then minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. So I'm going to take away that 4, which I don't want, and replace it with the minus 8 that I do want. Sort the left-hand side out. x minus 2 all squared minus 12 equals 0. Take the 12 over to the side, so add 12 to both sides. x minus 2 squared equals 12. Square root both sides x minus 2 is the square root of 12 or minus the square root of 12. Add 2 to both sides. x is 2 plus the square root of 12 or 2 minus the square root of 12. And they are your two answers. For our third example, we'll try something a little bit harder. Solve by completing the square 2x squared minus 16x plus 24 is equal to 0. The problem here is the 2 in front of the x squared, so we start by taking out a common factor of 2. So it's 2 lots of x squared minus 8x 
plus 12 is equal to naught. Now at this stage, you can cancel both sides by two. It's two times the thing in curly brackets is equal to naught. So the only way that can happen is if the thing in curly brackets is itself equal to naught. So we know that x squared minus 8x plus 12 is equal to naught. Complete the square. Half of minus 8 is minus 4. So it's x minus 4 all squared. But at one side, square out the bracket. So it's x squared minus 8x plus 16. So we have to take away the 16 we don't want and add in the 12 we do want. Sort the numbers out. So it's x minus 4 all squared. Minus 16 plus 12 is minus 4. That's equal to naught. Add 4 to both sides. x minus 4 all squared is equal to 4. Square root both sides. x minus 4 equals, and if you square root 4, you get 2 or minus 2. We don't have to use a square root sign this time because four square roots exactly. Add four to both sides. So x is equal to four plus two, which is six, or four minus two, which is two. So we have two nice integer solutions here.